Well, we mentioned we saw a softer start for stocks on this Wednesday. Let's get a little bit more on the roadmap for equities ahead. Michelle Schneider, one of our regulars, joining us, Managing Director of Market Gauge Group. Mish, nice to see you. Um, it just It's feeling so topsy-turvy. We were seeing the S&P 500 within the last couple of days getting on the doorstep of a bear market. Then it seemed like investors said, no, I'm going to come in, going to do a little bit of buying. We saw some risk on appetite yesterday. And then here we go again. Everybody once again talking about inflation and interest rates and the combination that that brings for the global economy, the U.S. economy. We're even watching it here in Canada. So what would you say about the mood of the markets right now? Well, we have, first of all, Powell said yesterday, I don't know how you could be much plainer yeah. by saying that we're in for pain. I, you know, if you take his words literally, then he was really sending out a warning that even though we know that they're partly responsible for being very late to the idea of inflation and stagflation, that they actually now realize that it's an issue and it's something they're going to have to contend with and is obviously not peaking. And I saw Canada numbers were also at record highs yeah. or at least near record highs. And this is happening globally, Germany and everywhere, really. So to me, you have a situation, though, where he also said the economy is strong. And I'm bringing out what he said because I think it really reflects what we're seeing. The economy is strong. There's going to be a softish and I love ish. I add ish to a lot of things, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> Landing. And so here we are. We have a tremendous amount of cash on the sidelines. Actually, the highest amount of cash on the sidelines since 9-11, which I found to be interesting. But on the other hand, this great capitulation that has created this bounce that we've had over the last several days is not really a capitulation. When you look at 82% of the stocks in 2008 were in the S&P were at one-year lows, where only 32% right now are. And our earnings reports have just shown some disasters with Target and Walmart and Amazon. So this is a situation where I think it's exactly what we would expect. Stagflation means you can get into a trading range, you can stick in those trading ranges for years potentially, and it's going to be very hard to see sustained growth in many areas of the market, particularly I think growth stocks and tech. And we have to expect those higher interest rates and inflation. And to me, we have not even really seen potentially what could happen as a result of the inflation because it's food driven. And people get really, really upset when they can't afford to feed their families yeah. or when shelves are bare. And that has definitely shown no signs of abating. So then where does internal strife come into play? Right. Yeah, no. And, and I was saying earlier, um, uh, the Bloomberg markets team. Uh, looking at the past charts and saying the kind of pressure we've seen in the market, given everything you're saying, is similar to the setup ahead of the um, significant recessionary realities we saw, call it 1973 to 1975. So we could be headed there. Maybe we're not headed there. But we've got a lot of astute investors who've been watching BNM Bloomberg for years. They're always looking for those opportunities as long-term investors. And I know you're keeping an eye on even those hard-hit growth stocks. So let's go through some of your investing ideas today. You've got oil and soft commodities on the list, but you've also got beaten up technology companies. Block, the former Square is one you've been watching. Gaming player Take-Two Interactive. And in biotechnology, you're looking at an ETF from iShares, IB. Be. Any common themes here, or are these just, you know, this is the market you've got to be in, uh, nimble and picking different flavors? I think what you just said in the latter part of the statement is 100% true, except with biotechnology, because it's a cyclical and a non-cyclical. So at this point, you want to invest in things that people, I, although we thought that way with consumer staples, and clearly Walmart's feeling the pinch of inflation and supply chain, but you want to go into things at least that you're pretty sure could sustain pricing power and obviously passing costs to consumers in the drugs and in the biotechnology sector is an area. But we've seen if the market really has a tremendous move to the downside, hardly anything is safe. Now, take two is an interesting one because they're getting involved with uh, soccer and FIFA and video gaming in soccer. And so they could be a longer term growth stock. But again, 
you really have to pick carefully. So that's one we're looking at if it holds up, if we see a little bit more of a correction in these most recent gains it's had. But I still think the bulk of the money should be really looking at these commodities. And you you mentioned 73 to 75. I'm so happy you said that because this is what I'm studying. In 73, we had the oil embargo. Oil went crazy. And then we, right, then everything kind of got driven down. In 76, sugar, sugar went to 60 cents plus a, a pound, which right now it's trading around 20 cents a pound. And that was the start of the second wave of this inflationary factor. And then oil and sugar sort of leveled off. A lot of the food commodities leveled off. And then gold and silver went crazy when it seemed like things were completely out of control in the late 70s. Now, that was over a six-year, seven-year period. Things happen much quickly now. But we really still believe, we still believe that we have not seen the end of geopolitical issues around everything that's going on and people feeling so frustrated and taken advantage of. And that's where gold and silver can, can still wake up big. 